In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Spotify for artists because I get a lot of comments of people asking me like, how do I find this number of saves in my song? How do I find my stats for the song? What does this mean? And I wanted to just make one video going over it because right now it's kind of spread across a bunch of videos. So let's just dive right into it. So first of all, how do you actually get Spotify for artists and what is it? So um, if you want to get it, just go to artist.spotify.com and you'll be brought to this page. Um, it's a free service by Spotify. Once you have music on the platform, or if you want to set this up before your first release goes live, contact your distributor and get the, the URL for the song. Once you do that, you can submit that to Spotify and they'll actually give you access to your Spotify for artists. You'll click get access. Artist or manager, you'll log in to a Spotify account. You can always make a free one if you don't pay for Spotify. And you'll just... Uh, Enter in that URL and you'll get inside of Spotify for artists. And again, keep in mind, you do have to either have a song already out or you have to have a song about to come out. And that means you have to have a distributor for your song and you have to have pushed a song through your distributor. So if you're using something like DistroKid, after you upload through DistroKid, normally 24 hours or 48 hours later, you you can essentially sign up for Spotify for artists. Some other platforms, like I think CD Baby in particular, can take a week or two weeks to go from their platform, the distribution platform, over to Spotify. So always keep that in mind if you're trying to set this up before songs out. Uh, it, the timeline might be different. But anyways, once you set the, all that up, you'll get access to something like this. This is my Spotify for artists. Um, the homepage here just gives you essentially a bunch of updates and tips. They do actually have some essentially tutorial videos, which, which are good. They're kind of basic in my opinion, but they're useful information. And sometimes they're actually quite useful. Um, now you'll also get a last seven day summary over here of how many listeners, streams and followers um, over your last seven days, the top songs that you've had, and your top playlists over the period. If we go over to the music tab, this is, <laughs> it'll be a little boring of your first release, but over time it gets very exciting because you have all this data for all these songs. And in a lot of my videos, I talk about getting the stream rate and, or the repeat listen rate and also the save rate. So this is where I pull a lot of this data. If your song just came out, Last 28 days is probably solid, but if, if it came out a little bit before and you want to look at the lifetime of the song, you might do since 2015. Or if you want to look at a more recent period, you might do like last seven days or last uh, 24 hours. But the default is 28 days. So what is the save rate? Well, the save rate is the number of saves you've gotten on a song divided by the number of listeners. And then it's just a percentage. It'll be like 50% or like 20% or like 90%, whatever it is. Then we have the repeat listen rate. This is the number of times each person on average listen to your song. So this is just the number of streams divided by the number of listeners. This could be like three. That means people listen an average of three times. See, in this case, it's like 3.5 or something. So on average, everyone that listens to the song listens to it about 3.5 times. Um, if I look at like this song, it's more like 2.3. So that's kind of, you know, how I eyeball it. Normally, if, especially when you're starting out, it'd be best to make a spreadsheet to calculate these numbers until you kind of get a good feel of just like looking around and finding out what the, you know, doing the mental math and stuff like that. Um, the views column is for something called Spotify Canvas, which is kind of like a little video that plays in the mobile app when your song plays. And I actually have a video you can check out right here. Um, everyone has access to Spotify Canvas now. I got access to it a little bit early and it was cool, but now everyone has it. So might as well take advantage of it. Um, it, it it's cool, just check out that video. You'll learn, you'll learn more there. Um, now you can also sort things by different results here just by clicking and doing that. And if you wanna see the exact numbers, you can just, uh, mouse over a value for a bit and it'll show you the exact number so you don't have to just like trust the, the rounding when you're, when you're just filling out your spreadsheets. So next we'll move on to the releases. This just kind of organizes all your releases by the time they came out. Um, if your song came out less than like 24 hours ago, you'll have to look here to see it because you won't see it in here. So like one day after release, you still won't see it here. You'll have to go into this page to see it. And also to get your live Results. Another point, the first seven days you release, you'll actually have live data. You won't have to wait 24 hours to see what data actually occurred. And this is where you'll find that song in that first day. The playlist tab is where you see all the playlists that your song is in over this period. 
So um, the top section will be algorithmic playlists, algorithmic playlists or playlists that Spotify curates algorithmically. So based on people's listening habits, if they like a bunch of artists and you're similar to all those artists, maybe you'll start getting shared with other people who like those other artists. Um, we have editorial playlists. Right now I'm only in one, but this is where they'll show up. And then listener playlist. These are all the playlists where people will like that listen to your song and like it or if you use submit hub or playlist push these are where those playlists will show up as well you can see the number of listeners and streams generated by each individual playlist and actually if you have multiple songs in that playlist you can see how many streams for each and you can also click on it to actually go to their playlist and check them out you know see if it's a playlist you're actually <laughs> that's actually good or or if it's something that's a little sketchy um and yeah so I'll scroll all the way back up. We also have upcoming. So if you have a release that's coming up and you want to pitch it to Spotify editorial, this is where you do it. You go to music, upcoming, just like we did here. And I actually have a video on how I recommend you pitch to Spotify editorial that you can check there. I'll link to these uh, at the end of the video if I remember. <laughs> but um, I've gotten into two. It's very competitive and hard to get into these editorial playlists unless you're in a very specific niche. Um, but yeah, just check that video for more information on pitching. So next that brings us to the audience section. And first of all, we get listeners over the course of this time period for your whole account, not a specific song. We get streams and we get followers. Um, pretty simple. You can also sort by time and you can even download the data as a CSV file and, and make your own graphs and stuff. We have the source of streams, which we can see how many came from your profile and catalog, people's own playlist and library, other listeners' playlist. This category is where like the submit hub and playlist push curators would come from. Editorial playlist, algorithm playlist, and other. All sorts of demographic data, gender, age, similar artists, top countries. Apparently US is my number one country, which is awesome because I'm from there. Uh, top cities. Um, and yeah. Now you can also look at, you can't look at this like data for these results. This stuff stays the same regardless of whether you change this. So on that note, before I go to profile, let's jump back to music because if I click on a specific song, you can see just like the audience section, we have a similar type of thing. You can see the amount of streams over time for the song, uh, how the date, the data compared for the last period versus this period and the change, um, all the sources, the countries, and the cities for the song as well. And of course, we can click on the playlist to see what playlist that the song has been on and you know the number of streams and actually check out the playlist, what, what person made the playlist, stuff like that. So now we'll move on. Oh, also, I mentioned this in the Canvas video, but this is where you add Canvas. So next, let's move on to the profile. This is an incredibly important section because this is how you customize what your account looks like. So. Um, this is pretty much the reason why you'd want to get access to Spotify for Artists before your song comes out, so you can set this stuff up. Um, you can choose an artist pick, and basically this means that you can um, pin something to the top of your profile. So if I open up Spotify and I go to my profile, I drag it on screen, you can see that I have this artist pick here. Um, in, you know, new to my mute. Well, it's hard to see because I shrunk my thing so small, but this says new to my music. Click here to check out some stuff. Um, and that's how you pick it. You actually pin it when you're on the uh, Spotify for Artists. You can also add a fundraising pick. I haven't done that because I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to, I guess. Um, you can also change your banner picture here. And you can also go to your About page. You can add some images in here. And this is where you customize your bio and your social media links. I highly, highly recommend. I think I have a video on this as well, but... Um, Get some images in here because you want people to get here and actually like stick around. You don't want people to go to your profile and see one song, no pictures, no bio, no links, because then they can't find anything else about you. Um, you want them to be able to go here and if they want to learn more, you want to give them something to learn more. So they can come here, they can see, I actually need to up, up, update this because I'm in a new studio now, but um, they can go here and they can see kind of what environment I work in. They can see who I am, what I look like an idea of like kind of what I do. I do production with synthesizers. So they get a kind of an idea that like I'm a producer. Um, and the description of kind of learning about who I am, what I'm into, what I do. And they can even go and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And they can even contact me here if they have a business request. 
Um, apparently, you can do some concert stuff if you're into that. And um, there is a way to hook up a store to Spotify, but it seems to be somewhat weird and challenging to do. So that's why I don't have it either. But there's a way to do it. So a uh, couple more things before we wrap this up that are actually could be very important for you, depending on um, how what stage you're at in your music. Um, let me I'm going to blur this out. But if I click up here and I go down to manage team, what I can do is I'll click on. So these are the accounts that I'm an admin of. If I click on me. You can actually invite people. So let's say, you know, let's say you want to hire me to run your Facebook ads or something. Um, and you contact me and we talk. One of the things that I would do is I want to be able to track the Spotify data for anyone whose ads I'm running. So essentially, if you're hiring someone to do your ads or maybe you have a manager or maybe you're on a label, um, you would invite them into one of these things. You know, maybe they're a label. You would type in the, you know, <laughs> Warner Records or whatever. And then um, John Smith. John Smith at Warner.com and you can give them permission. So either they're a viewer, meaning that they can see your data, but they can't do anything. All they can do is see your data. This is usually what I would need when I, if I was doing ads for someone or I just, let's say I wanted to just kind of check on how someone's account is growing, um, like a friend of mine or something, I would ask to be a viewer. So that way they can feel comfortable that I'm, I can't touch their data or anything. An editor can actually change their profile so they can pitch to playlists they can change their biography, they can add images, um, and an admin can literally do anything. Um, well, actually, wait, an editor, yeah, an editor can do the profile, and admin can invite other people as well. So that's kind of the difference there. Usually you're gonna be doing a viewer access and, and stuff like that. So that is everything there is to know about Spotify for artists, at least to my knowledge. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about how to promote your music on Spotify, check out this playlist right here where I show you how to promote your music on Spotify using Facebook ads. And I also have a course on the entire thing if you're more into courses. And I also do consultations as well. So feel free to check the links in the description if you're more interested in that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.